Hello everyone, my name is Nina. In today's video we will solve a problem uh, where we will calculate maximum forces on a structural member that is installed on a seabed. These problems are common in renewable energy uh, and to solve these type of problems we will apply Morrison's equation. So our problem is a vertical cylindrical structural member of an offshore structure with diameter 1 meter is installed at a site where the water depth is 150 meters and the mean current is negligible. The design wave for the structural member has a height of 8 meters and a period of 12 seconds. I show all these um, parameters on a diagram. Uh, I also define coordinate system where origin starts at steel water, le uh, water level, SWL. Uh, longitudinal axis is X and vertical axis is Z. I also show some values of constant coefficients and seawater density. So we need to calculate the maximum wave induced horizontal drag and inertia forces on the structural member. And also we need to calculate the maximum total horizontal wave force on the structural member and also identify when this maximum occurs within the wave cycle. In today's video we will talk only about how you would calculate the maximum wave induced horizontal drag force on the structural member. I will make other videos where I will talk about how to calculate inertia forces maximum and also how to calculate total force and when it occurs within the cycle. So to start calculation, we always start with calculating wavelengths. I use full equation to calculate wavelengths, I show on this slide. You can see that lambda, which is wavelengths, is on both sides of this equation. So to solve this equation, you need to use iteration method. You can use solver function in Excel, or you can use solver on your calculator. If you would like me to show you how to use solver function in Excel, uh, please let me know and I will make another video. Just want to highlight that in blue color, I show the equation how you would calculate the wavelengths for deep wave water. And this um, you can calculate using simplified equation and check if you did uh, have a case with deep waves or I just prefer to calculate lambda using full equation. So my lambda is approximately 225 meters. So now I need to identify if I can use Morrison's equation to calculate maximum forces. Morrison's equation is applicable for small structures and small structures are defined depending on the ratio of diameter of the structure divided by the wavelengths. So capital D is diameter of my structural cylindrical member and lambda is wavelength. So my ratio is much smaller compared to the limit 0.2. Therefore, Morrison equation is applicable and I can use Morrison equation to calculate force that due to both waves and steady currents. So this is my full equation. On the left hand side this is my total force uh, that is um, acting on the structural member and on the right hand side three terms. First term is my uh, wave induced drag force, second term is wave induced inertia force and this last term is the drag force due to steady current. Since in the question it says mean current is negligible, it means that my last term can be uh, cancelled because it's negligible. Therefore Morrison equation simplified and I only have two terms on the right which is drag force due to waves and inertia force due to waves. So to calculate uh, this I would first would like to remind you some definitions of parameters from 
Morrison's equation. So as I already said, there are two terms, drag force and inertia force due to waves. So F on the left-hand side is the total instantaneous force. Therefore, FD is the instantaneous drag force, FI instantaneous inertia force. V, capital letter V, is instantaneous water particle velocity. Generally, it has two components, horizontal U and vertical W. V with dot on top is the instantaneous water particle acceleration. And again, generally has two components, horizontal U dot and vertical W dot components. And AP is just projected area and V with index volume is the volume of the structure. So to calculate Morrison equation, we need equations uh, um, for velocities components and as well as acceleration components. For this, we will use equations that are uh, based um, from linear uh, wave theory. I summarize them on these slides. Uh, so I show equations for longitudinal uh, velocity component, vertical velocity component, longitudinal acceleration component, and vertical acceleration component. In those three columns, I show formulas applicable for intermediate waves, for deep waves, and shallow waves. So, as you can see, depending on the ratio of depths at your site divided by lambda, for example, if d divided by lambda greater or equal than 0.5, we have deep waves. So before we decide which equation we use, we need to see what conditions for our problem. So as I uh, as says in the problem, we need to calculate maximum wave-induced horizontal drag and inertia force. For drag force, we need velocity, and for inertia force, we need acceleration. So D should be greater or equal than 0.5 multiplied by lambda. We estimated lambda as approximately 225. Therefore, D, which is in the problem 150, is greater than 112.4 meters. Therefore, we have deep waves. And therefore, for Morrison equation, for velocity, we can use this equation for deep waves. And for... Um, inertia force, we can use um, this equation. Why we are using this equation? Because in the question we are asked to calculate maximum wave-induced horizontal. Horizontal, so we are using horizontal velocity component and horizontal acceleration component. So we identified equations uh, from this table, and now we can start. So, as I said, in today's video, we will only calculate, I will only show you how to calculate the maximum wave-induced horizontal drag force. Uh, we will use a standard equation where drag force is calculated as 0.5 multiplied by density of your fluid, multiplied by drag coefficient, multiplied by diameter of the structure, and after that, we do integration from the, our origin, which is still water level, zero, up to the seabed, minus d, because origin is at still water level, therefore whatever is below this is negative, so minus d. And it's proportional to u square. But to take into account the sign for horizontal velocity component, we use u multiplied by absolute value of u, dz. So we do integration. So if we substitute u from previous slide under the integral sign, then we can do integration and determine, and we can determine the maximum wave-induced horizontal drag force on the structural member. So substituting gives us this equation where under integral sign, we just use this equation. Therefore, this term becomes in power 2. Here you also, E 
in more in power kz and then in power two and then cosine and then another cosine so looking under the um, looking at values um on under integral sign let's take outside of the integral symbol all constant values all what you see in these brackets constant we can take this outside of integral also you can see cosine there is no z variable under cosine therefore we can take this outside of the integral so our equation under integral we are only left with e in power 2 kz dz an integration from zero from still water level to the seabed minus d so using standard either tables of integrals or list of integrals for example from Wikipedia, uh, this is a standard uh, integral which can be calcul uh, which can be uh, integration can be done using this equation where in this example our a will be equal to multiplied by k where k you know it's a wave number or 2 pi divided by lambda we will calculate wave number later so let's do integration and uh, simplify equation for um, drag force and then calculate its value i will just repeat equations from previous slides so this is our equation for uh, drag force, maximum wave induced horizontal drag force. And this was equation from um, a list of integrals, just how to take this standard integral. And now we do integration. So I just do integration, what you see here, uh, um, uh, highlighted with the red box. And as you can see, this is my integral. And here we just do integration where our a is equal to multiplied by wave number or k. And this what you get when you do integration. After you substitute your 0 and minus d, your final answer is 1 divided by 2k. And in brackets you have 1 minus exponent in power minus 2kd. So we will just calculate and substitute all these variables, which are constant values. So all these uh, parameters are given, like drag coefficient, diameter, density, and so on. We can also estimate the wave, calculate the wave number, 2 pi divided by lambda. And therefore, we have our drag force is equal 52.25 multiplied by cosine multiplied by cosine and this is in kilonewtons so if you substitute and you show in newtons it will be 52,250 so the maximum wave induced horizontal drag is when your cosine is equal to 1 therefore the maximum wave induced horizontal drag force is equal 52.25 kilonewtons so this is the end of this first video. In this video, I covered only first part, calculations of maximum wave-induced horizontal force. So in next video, I will cover calculations of maximum wave-induced inertia force. And then I will cover in video number three, the maximum wave-induced total force, as well as when this occurs. So goodbye.